just about flush it out, out by doing that. Also make sure the area is clean. I notice in Asian toilets there's a little uh, hose there <laughs> that you can wash yourself there. It's, it's very good. My husband loved it so much when he went to Asia. We've actually got one in our bathroom now. <laughs> and when we get visitors, they come in and go, well, look at that. <laughs> but it's actually a great idea because um, it's, it helps to keep that area very clean and it should be clean. So that's uh, incontinence and UTIs. Hemorrhoids. Now, you have something that's growing very freely in these islands and it's, it's called aloe vera, yeah? Now, aloe vera has a growth stimulant and aloe vera is rich in slimy mucilage, we know that. So it's very good for the lining of the gut Aloe vera is a natural source of B12. And aloe vera has a, has a, has a um, plant sugar in it that stimulates cell-to-cell -cell communication. And there's a whole company that's built on aloe vera products. It's called Manatech. And you can pay a lot of money for Manatech. Or you can just eat the aloe vera. So how do you eat the aloe vera? Now what we do, because it was one of the first plants I put in our health retreat and I just observed where it liked growing and I found out that on the southern side of our health retreat it really likes it there because I wanted to give aloe vera to our guests every day. So what we do is we cut a leaf and then we sit it in a glass for one hour and all the yellow slime lining the skin drains out. Then you take it out and cut that bottom bit up and then you chop it sideways, skin and all, and you put a big leaf chopped up in a two litres of water in the evening. And then in the morning you drink it and you drink that all through the day. Isn't it strong? Well, you put some mint leaves in it or a squeeze of lemon. It's actually, I think, a delightful drink. That's one of the easiest ways to drink aloe vera. So we have a jug or a couple of jugs, and our guests drink that all day. And when it's getting low, we just put more water in. Getting low, we drink, put more water in. In this hot climate, you would probably need to put it in the fridge overnight. And fresh every day. So one of our staff's main, main jobs to do about four in the afternoon is cut the leaf, sit it in a jar for one hour, chop it up and then our exercise coordinator comes in in the morning and he gives everyone aloe water with a squeeze of lemon in it. So that's ve very good internally. So why am I talking about with this hemorrhoids? Now there's a few things you can do for hemorrhoids and one is squatting. When you squat to do your daily evacuation you take pressure off the anus which is where the hemorrhoids are. So you can prevent and heal hemorrhoids simply by squatting. It's important to drink adequate water so the stools are soft. It's important to have a plant-based diet so that the tools, stools are soft. In fact, hemorrhoids mostly happens in constipation. A refined diet and also high meat and dairy and sugar, that constipates. So what can you do to relieve and what can you do to heal? You can cut a piece of aloe vera about that size and you can freeze it. So this is the gel, this is not the skin. That'll be a bit harsh, just the gel. And you can cut it and freeze it and just before you go to bed, you can insert that into the anus. In the morning, when you go to the bathroom, it'll just come out with your daily evacuation. Now what that ice coal will do, it will shrink up the hemorrhoid, and you only have feeling on the very outside. <laughs> you don't have any feeling once it goes in. But it will also coat and soothe that area of hemorrhoids. There's another thing you can do, and that is to use castor oil. Now to use castor oil, you get a cotton ball and you soak it with castor oil 
and you make it about like your little finger, which is about like that, mould it and freeze it. Now I'm warning you it'll take three days to freeze. Three days to freeze. And it must be frozen, otherwise you are, will be unable to insert it. But you do the same thing as you would do with the aloe. So maybe you'll do aloe one night and uh, castor oil the next night. So that's what you can do for hemorrhoids. For worms, keep the colon clean. You might, do some, you might need to do some colon cleansing because worms will only live in a colon that's not working well. I almost said dirty colon and you might say, Barbara, all colons are dirty. That's right. <laughs> the waste is coming out. But when a person is eating a lot of sugar, a lot of wheat, a lot of refined foods and meat, this encourages the growth of worms. But on a vegetarian diet, when the person is eating a plant-based diet and they're evacuating two times a day if they're eating two meals, three times a day if they're eating three meals, can you see there isn't really ground for the worms to live? Now, worms hate garlic. So, and you know what also worms hate? Is pumpkin seeds. So for worms, um, eat pumpkin seeds as the first thing that goes into your mouth at breakfast. There's something in the pumpkin seeds that the, that the worms hate. And then raw garlic. So how do you take the raw garlic? You can mix the raw garlic with a little bit of olive oil and put it on your sourdough toast or you can squeeze the raw or crushed garlic into your beans or your tofu. Or you can mix it in a little water and just throw it down. Now if there's a bit of discomfort at night, because the worms come out at night, you can get a clove of garlic, lubricate it, and you can insert it into your, your anus. And then no worms will come out. <laughs> now what that really just does is bring some relief. But what you've really got to do is hit it from the, from the inside. So that's for worms. Now, um, carpal tunnel and fibroids and cysts, they can be treated all with the same thing, and that is castor oil. So castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil, and wherever castor oil penetrates, it breaks up lumps, bumps, congestion, adhesion. So castor oil will break up a, a bone spur. Castor oil will break up scar tissue. So if a person has constipation, they can wear a castor oil compress and it'll penetrate deep and break it up. I met a lady who conquered her irritable bowel by applying castor oil compresses to her abdomen. She said, my husband's a doctor, I was not interested in what he had to offer. So she said, I conquered it with castor oil compresses. Now on top of that, you add stopping wheat, dairy, refined sugar and taking the slippery elm three or four times a day or the aloe vera that also coats, soothes and heals the lining of the gut, then a person can heal quite quickly. So castor oil can be applied to carpal tunnel. Now carpal tunnel is just the body protesting because you're doing this all day. Got that? <laughs> Do you know what that hand needs? It needs a rest from just doing that or RSI, repeated stress industry. What's the message? Stop. <laughs> and the other thing is, if that's your job and you've got to do it, really every hour you should get on the floor or get on the wall and do push-ups where you stretch those hands out, stretch those hands right out. So that's all those things are, you're just doing it too much. And you can go to bed at night with castor oil compresses on your hands. Now castor oil compresses, they're just a vehicle to hold the castor oil so it can go into you. So you can reuse that compress again and again and again and again. And it's not going to go away quickly. 
If you've had a bone spur for three years, it might take three months of daily application. If you've had a bone spur for three months, it might take three weeks of daily application. So depending how serious it is, how long it's been there, as to how long it will take to break it up. I met a lady who had breast cancer. She said, I was diagnosed with breast cancer 20 years ago. She said, I was in hospital. She said, they were offering chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery. She said, I'm just sitting shocked, um, devastated. And a delivery boy came in and she said, excuse me, can I get a lift out with you? She got out of that hospital. She went and stayed by the beach in a friend's house. And every morning she walked along the beach and every morning she gave God all the troubles in her life, anyone who had ever hurt her. But she said, I, she said all that was important, but she said, I applied castor oil compresses. She said, I wore it almost 24-7. So one of the easiest things to do for a woman to put onto her breast is to get a Modes pad and of course the Modes pad must be made out of cotton, natural fibre. The beauty of a Modes pad is it's very absorbent, so it can absorb a lot of castor oil. It has the plastic backing which will protect your clothes. And you put the castor oil on like this. It'll, it'll make a thick bubble because it is so thick. And it, you just leave it there for about 15 minutes. That's how long it'll take to soak in. And it'll soak in up to about here. And then you'll put it on your warm body and that warm body will thin the oil and it'll soak out a bit more. You see, if you were to put that castor oil on the whole thing, by the time you're putting it on your body, it's dripping everywhere and that's no fun. Castor oil is so thick, hard to get out of your clothes. So what a woman does is she applies that to her breast. And the best way to keep it there is a sports bra, and ideally a cotton sports bra, just to hold it in place. And every day she might put another teaspoon on it of castor oil. She will get to feel when it gets a little bit dry. One lady said to me, she said, I'm just wearing it 24-7. She said, it feels so nice, it's so comforting. And she said, it took her a matter of months and the lump in her breast was gone. So any lumps or bumps, so you can do this to fibroids on the uterus. Now if a woman has fibroids on the uterus, it'll break up the fibroid, not overnight, but little by little by little. So let me show you where a woman would apply it if she had a fibroid. So here is the body. Sorry, I'm not a great drawer, but you get what I mean. Here's the belly button and there is the there is the pubic bone, so a woman's uterus and ovaries is just there. So she applies it just, and the hip bones are probably about here. So she would apply it, say, between her hips and across that area. So she could use a, a Modes pad. So it'll penetrate deep and break up the fibroid. It'll penetrate deep and break up cysts on the ovaries, polycystic ovarian syndrome. But at the same time, a woman needs to be taking the Anna's Wild Yam Cream because what is causing the growth of the fibroids, what is causing the growth of the cysts, what is causing the growth of the breast cancer is oestrogen. You see, oestrogen is a known human carcinogen and oestrogen stimulates rapid cell growth. So I'm sure you got that message last night. So really, that's what a woman needs to do. Apply the castor oil compress and also take the Anna's Wild Yam Cream. I have seen women totally heal these things by doing that. That is good news. Now, if a person has... Um, gallstones in their gallbladder because your rib, um, your right rib, under that is your liver. But your liver comes out a little bit under your right rib and then underneath that is the, is the gallbladder. So applying the castor oil compresses in my book Self-Heal by Design on my liver chapter I talk about 
um, helping the liver by putting the castor oil compresses on and also applying it over the, the, the gallbladder so it can break up those gallstones. And if a person has kidney stones, they can apply it to the back. So then you would maybe bandage it around, around the area. Remember, it can penetrate deep. If it break, can break up a bone spur, it can break up gallstones, kidney stones, tumours. I had a man come to me with a brain tumour and I would get him to apply the castor oil to that brain tumour where the brain tumour was. I had a lady come to us who had a brain tumour. She'd already had radiotherapy but it really didn't do a lot. So when she came to us, she was in a wheelchair and she was shaking a little bit. We found out that she was very constipated. So I like to use the process of elimination. You know you cannot heal if you've still got a house full of rubbish. Is that right? So castor oil compresses, I think we did some enemas and also herbs and we got that clear. Um, we did quite a few different treatments on this woman and when, when she went home she continued everything, the castor oil, keeping her bowels working. The doctor was very excited about her progress. Within one year there was no trace of the brain tumour. It had totally healed but she still was shaking. Do you know they determined that it was from the damage done by the radiotherapy. So the radiotherapy which was to heal the tumour didn't and damaged other parts of her brain. So if she hadn't had the radiotherapy she probably would have totally recovered. So carpal tunnel and cysts and fibroids, the castor oil can, can do all that. I don't advise you taking castor oil by mouth because it can be quite irritating in the gut. So you're better to use it externally. And remember you can use that compress again and again and again because the compress is just a vehicle to hold the castor oil to go into you. So if you want to make a bigger compress, maybe you've got a sore knee, just use several layers of cloth. <coughs> <coughs> Ideally old toweling and then you can apply that and then cover it with a bit of plastic. But those Modest pads are quite handy because you've got the plastic backing, they're very absorbent, they don't take up a lot of room. Now some people sleep with it, some people don't want to sleep with the poultice on, maybe they will wear it in their clothes in the day. The beauty of this compress, it's so tiny that it can just slip down into your, you know, in your pants or your clothing will hold it into place. Castor oil, can use or <coughs> castor oil can also be used on the eyes. It can help break down cataracts and it can help prevent and help glaucomas. You just put one drop on your finger and wipe it over your eye. A little bit will go on your lashes. It'll penetrate through your eye. You can put a drop in your eye but it's just a bit difficult. It's just easy to just wipe it over your eyelid. It'll penetrate through. You'll get a little bit on your ashes, your lashes, which will penetrate through. It's very sticky and thick, but you'll find within about half an hour it has absorbed through. What is castor oil made of? It's the oil from the castor oil plant. Do you familiar with the castor oil plant? Grows very freely in a lot of the Fijian islands. And I know in Jamaica, I met a few people from Jamaica when I worked in the Bronx, and they make their own j castor oil from the castor oil plant. <coughs> the castor oil we buy is clear. <coughs> Excuse me. The castor oil that they make in Jamaica is dark brown. <laughs> but it will all do it. The same thing will do it. Yes? For eczema, one of the main causes of eczema is an allergy to, to gluten and dairy and it can take two to three months before the skin clears up once you've stopped it. So what can you do meanwhile? <coughs> you can try aloe vera, you can try coconut oil, but it, eczema is an indication of, of, of an allergy internally. So 
aloe vera or coconut oil can bring a little bit of relief. But stopping those foods will do it. Let's say someone stops the wheat for one month and has a biscuit. Do you know they're back to square one? Now they have to, have to wait another two months. And the book Wheat Belly by Dr. William Davis, he will explain what's happened to the wheat. They've changed the wheat. That's the problem. Yeah. Ah, uh, sometimes people have allergies to egg, but it's really the wheat and the dairy. Yes. Where do you buy it? Uh, your chemist should have it. Do you call it a chemist or pharmacy? Mustafa has a lot. Mustafa. Yeah. Um, usually castor oil is just castor oil. It's not usually got anything else in it. It's very thick. Are there any questions, yeah? Uh, is balding reversible? Um, balding can be slowed down, but it's usually a genetic, uh, it's a genetic thing. There's no balding in my family and in my side of the family, but I noticed my youngest son, he's, he's actually losing a little bit of hair here, so he must have got that from the other side of the family. But if you exercise, you increase the circulation of the blood to the scalp. Uh, you can also spend time every day standing on your head. <laughs> if you can't stand on your head, you can lay on the bed and let your head down because that increases blood supply there. Massaging the scalp. And there is a herb for the head. It's called rosemary. So if you massage coconut oil with a few drops of rosemary or in it um, that can that can help the scalp that can also help a little bit with hair loss too yes how old would you how would you cleanse your hands your hands, as the rest of your body, is just an indication of the, what's happening in the rest of your body. So you would cleanse your hands <coughs> by cleansing your body. <laughs> and before you eat, or oh, how do you clean your hands before eating? Um, you can. You are using your hands all the time. I stayed in uh, a house recently where they had a dog. And the girl played with the dog and then went up and prepared the dinner. Oh dear. Do you know, it's very important to wash your hands, yeah. And if you just wash your hands with water and rub them, you can get a bit of sand and rub them. Or you can uh, use a bit of aloe vera to clean them. You can put a bit of salt on them to clean them. You can put some lemon juice on to clean them. And it might be a good idea to even have a bottle in your bathroom with essential oils in it, maybe a bit of tea tree or eucalyptus oil or... And, and you can... Thank you very much. How about sodium bicarbonate? Sodium bicarbonate. Uh-huh. <coughs> Most uh, toothpastes are just made out of sodium bicarbonate. I have had a request too to explain the sodium bicarbonate wraps that we do with when someone is conquering cancer. So I'll give you the recipe. And the recipe is two kilos of sodium bicarbonate. Now do you have produce stores? I suppose not. We have produce stores in the country and they have bales of hay and chook feed and nails and hammers and all that sort of stuff. And you can buy sodium bicarbonate bulk. So that's where we get it. We get 20 kilos of sodium bicarbonate <coughs> for $20. And I think your, your dollar's about equal with mine. And then five litres 
and we do boiling water. So here's the table and what we do is we have uh, five towels and these aren't great big fluffy towels, these are more your, your uh, I don't know, um, that wide and about that tall, just your average towel. And you soak, dip the towel in the sodium bicarbonate and water and then you wring it out, it's boiling water so you've got gloves on and I just twist it and then you lay it over the bed and then the person gets on the bed on that towel and then this goes over the torso so the person puts their arms up and you wrap their whole torso that side and that side and then I have a small woolen blanket where I lay it over because that'll keep it hot and then the person puts one leg up in the air and we wrap that whole uh, leg. Ah, we've got voice. We wrap the leg in the in the in the towel. So, you know, you would put the towel on like the lengthways like that and wrap it around the leg. And then you put a garbage bag over that leg. And then the leg goes down. And then you do it to another leg and then you do it to an arm, then you do it to another arm. And when you do it in one arm, you put a garbage bag over that. Then another arm, a garbage bag over that. And then you wrap that whole body in a big blanket. And you keep them there for one hour. It's very important that you check the neck that no air is getting in there. The reason we make it boiling is because it cools down so quickly. And once you've wrung it out and you open it up, it's cooling very quickly. You want the towels to be hot. The sodium bicarb will sink to the bottom, so every time I dunk a towel, I'm mixing it. So these hot towels are infused with the sodium bicarb. And what happens is, that sodium bicarb is absorbed into, through the skin into the body and it alkalizes because cancer thrives in an acid environment. So that is the aim of this. At the same time, the people are drinking green drinks, alkalizing from the inside, eating a plant-based diet, they've stopped the sugar for a period of time. In my book I explain all of that. Now, someone told me that this, I am demonstrating this on YouTube. I didn't even know it was on YouTube. They said it was a little Indian boy that I demonstrated on. I was in uh, Invercargill, uh, March 2017, so I might have demonstrated there because um, it was an Indian doctor that got me to go there. So it might, might be his son. <laughs> So I didn't realise that, but they must have filmed it and put it up on YouTube. So you can see it on YouTube. I guess what you would do is Google Barbara O'Neill sodium bicarb wraps and I, I might Google that and see what it looks like. So that's the sodium bicarbonate wraps. The only time I advise taking so bi sodium bicarbonate by mouth is if a person has stomach cancer and they would take it first thing in the morning and they would take it just before they go to bed at night. If they take it with a meal, they're neutralising their stomach acid so that the food can't be broken down. If a person has cancer in the la last part of their colon, they can have an enema with the sodium bicarb. But that's probably the only two times that you would take it internally. Are there any questions before we close? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon? Uh, liquid in the, lungs uh, the liquid in the lungs. One would have a look at why the liquid was in the lungs. Um, it is very difficult to get the liquid out of the lungs naturally. In fact, most people, if the liquid's building up in the lungs, they need to go into hospital and they puncture a little hole between the ribs and they drain, drain the liquid out. 
Um, it's one of the side effects too when, when someone has cancer, but it's difficult to, uh, you can't really <laughs> do anything about that naturally. It's just, you just have to get that liquid out. So with pneumonia, um, you would give your body all the conditions for healing. You can use the castoral compresses on your chest for pneumonia, for chest problems. And one thing I haven't given you yet is the flu bomb. So I'll give you the recipe for the flu bomb. And this is your natural antibiotic, this drink. So when someone has bronchitis or a um, sinus or pneumonia, they take the flu bomb. And they take the flu bomb three times a day. And often in three days they're healed. So the first ingredient is garlic and you crush that. How much do you use? As much as you can bear. <laughs> and then ginger, and you finely chop the ginger. So fine chop ginger, and that's usually about a quarter of a teaspoon. The next ingredient is eucalyptus oil. And if you don't have eucalyptus oil, you can use tea tree and the uh, the amount of that is one drop. And then cayenne pepper. I'm not putting an amount here because some people can only handle a sprinkle and some people can handle half a teaspoon. So it's whatever you can bear. And then the juice of one lemon. And then one teaspoon of honey. And then with that, you put about a quarter of a or maybe a third of a cup of hot water and then you drink it. <coughs> now for people with tender stomachs, the crushed garlic might be a bit strong, so they would drink it and then have a nice hot thick bowl of soup <laughs> and that will help to calm from the stomach. Or if they don't want to eat, they just on juices, they could take slippery elm and then take that. And that will give a little coating over the stomach. Thank you very much for all the information, but I don't think you answered my question. I think I did. You wanted to know how to cleanse the hands. And I said you could use sand, you could use water, you could use soap, if you can get a healthy soap. You can use, a. remember I said to put a bottle of uh, a spray bottle in your bathroom that's got essential oils in it. You can use clove, you can use oregano, you can use thyme, you can use eucalyptus oil, or you can use uh, tea tree. They're all strong antibacterials. Did you want me to say something else? Yes, because yeah? in a place like this, we have to wash our hands. But I understand that some people are adverse to using soap. Yes. Do you know, we have more to fear fr from within than without. <laughs> Meaning that... Do you know, we have... People fear germs. I don't fear germs because they're everywhere. You actually can't get rid of them. So it is important to clean your hands and if you don't use soap, just use water. Sometimes I don't want to use soap because the soap has so many chemicals in it that I don't want to use the soap. So it's often I will just wash my hands and I'll scrub them together with one another. But, we, but if we've got a body that is working well, and some so-called germs get in, and by the way, there are more microorganisms in our body than cells. Did you know that? And there are 10 times more microorganisms in the gut than anywhere else in the body, and it's the proper balance. So if I happen to eat what's called pathogens, my strong hydrochloric acid will wipe that out, my, my gut flora will bring it under control, and that's why I said we've got more to fear from within. If we're not looking after our body, we'll be more susceptible than without. And my children used to eat dirt. 
and it didn't kill them. And I remember one day I looked at my baby's nappy, there were gum nuts and bits of crayon. You know, crawling babies put all sorts of things into their body, don't they? In fact, sometimes they go into a corner and get the dirt and will eat the dirt. And my daughter sent me a picture of, of her little girl sitting there and she's getting the dirt from under the step and eating it. And it doesn't kill them because their gut has good, strong flora. So the theory that germs cause disease is, is wrong. In fact, Florence Nightingale said that when she read of the theory that germs cause disease, she said, this is the theory of a man of a very unstable mind. And anyone who believes it is equally unstable, germs don't cause disease, they're the result of unhealthful conditions. So, so if someone went into that hospital in Scutari, where Florence Nightingale went, and just brought in lots of antibiotics but didn't clean up the mess, would that have healed everyone? All she did was turn the tap off. All she did was make the environment clean so there's nowhere for germs to live. Germs are just opportunist organisms. You're just going to find them. The more filth, the more germs. Yes? There's not usually worms in the stomach, and you know why? Because the hydrochloric acid would kill them. You see that? But you can get worms in the colon, and they only live where they're getting well fed. And what do they live on? Waste, bad food. So you give your body the right conditions, it will heal. It's time for me to stop. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this weekend. Thank you so much for what you've taught us. Maybe we each be encouraged and inspired to begin implementing these things in our own lives that we might be testimonies and lights to all around us that we might let our light shine and men seeing our good works will glorify our Father which is in heaven is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.